Hi, everybody. Thanks for the introduction. I will present the paper, Art Track, Articulated Multi-Person Tracking in the Wild. This is a joint work done at Max Planck Institute for Informatics. In this paper, we propose a new task, Articulated Multi-Person Tracking. Given unconstrained monocular RGB video sequences of scenes with multiple people, the task is to detect and track all unique people across the sequence and estimate their body poses. On the right, you can see the predictions by our method. So this is a challenging task. We're dealing with the in the wild video sequences with a variety of activities, appearances, and camera People is unknown and it changes over the sequence as people enter or leave it. People often overlap each other, making it difficult to associate parts to people correctly. So now I'd like to mention the, uh, some of the related work. First of all, this is human pose estimation, which is a well-researched topic. A lot of great pose work has been focused on and recently methods for multi-person pose estimation realistic images with multiple people that have to be However, in this work, we're solving a much harder task of articulated multi-person tracking over time. Secondly, there is a large body of work on multi-target tracking. However, it mostly deals with street walking scenes with very little articulation, while our setting is more realistic with a variety of human motions, poses, and interactions. Moreover, it operates only on bounding boxes, which is insufficient for a rich understanding of complex human activities. Finally, there are some methods for human pose estimation in videos that benefit from incorporating temporal context from multiple frames. Unlike our work, though, they deal with single pre-localized persons where there is no need to, for detecting multiple people and associating them across time. To the best of our knowledge, we're the first to address the problem of articulated multi-person tracking in single camera videos. This problem generalizes and subsumes the following three tasks, person detection, pose estimation, and people tracking. I'd also like to mention that there is a concurrent work here at CVPR addressing the same task. Here's the overview of our articulated tracking method. Starting with the video sequence, in the first stage we compute body part detections for each frame. Then we connect these detections in a large spatio-temporal graph. And in the third step, we perform inference that does grouping both in space and time and obtain person tracks and body poses. So now in the first step, part detection. Most state-of-the-art pose estimation algorithms use conv uh, fully convolutional convnets for body part detection, which we also choose to build on. We first forward pass each frame of the video sequence through a body part detector convnet and obtain part probability score maps. We then discretize the score maps with non-maximum suppression and obtain a finite set of body part detections or proposals. Note that these body part proposals are without association to people and we have to rely on piecewise trained pairwise terms for grouping them into person instances. So this is the bottom up variant of our framework. In this paper, we propose a new top-down architecture for multi-person pose estimation. In crowded scenes, such as example on this slide, intuitively it is an easier task to detect people's heads compared to estimating full body poses. Practically, we first detect the location of a characteristic key point, in our case the chin, and condition the convnet on this root key point. We task the convnet to predict only parts of the person it's conditioned on while penalizing the parts of all the other people. The output score maps of such convnet represent the conditional distribution of parts given the person's head location. The top row shows score map conditioned on the person in front, which is predicted reliably. The bottom row shows the corresponding score map for the person in the back, which despite significant overlap is still recovered quite well. Finally, we sample from this conditional distribution and obtain top-down detections. This is in contrast to bottom-up detections obtained indiscriminately for all people. Having obtained the body part detections, I would like to move on to the second stage, which is building of the spatio-temporal graph. Spatio-temporal graph lies at the core of our method. Starting with the body part detections computed for each frame in the video sequence, we first connect them with the spatial edges within each frame. Then we add temporal edges, which connect detections across frames in time. Edges in this graph have associated costs with them. 
The cost of an edge that connects two detections reflects how likely these two detections are to belong to the same person. Spatial edges of the graph are responsible for grouping detections within frame. We're interested in the probability of a pair of detections to be in the same person. In the bottom-up variant of our model, we use the pairwise terms from the deeper cut paper presented at ECCV 16. These terms are based on predicted geometric relations between the parts of a human body. A major issue of the bottom-up grouping, though, is that detection and part-to-part -part association is learned piecewise. So in our proposed top-down formulation, we can directly use conditional probabilities from person condition score maps as edge strengths. This allows us to learn part-to-person association directly by the coordinate and tie it to the part detection. So there are several ways we can connect nodes of different part types in the spatial graph. First, it can be a fully connected graph, where detections of all types have edges between them. The first problem here is that some pairwise relations cannot be estimated reliably, especially long-range ones, for example, if you can add, connect head to feet. More importantly, a fully connected graph is prohi prohibitively large, making inference more computationally expensive. Graph formulation is general enough and supports arbitrary styles of connectivity. For example, we can add edges between the nodes that are either connected kinematically within the human body or otherwise are close to each other. This results in a much sparser graph and facilitates faster inference. Finally, in our top-down variant of the model, we only have conditional distributions of a part given person locations. This, this is why edges in the graph connect each body part only to a virtual per person node, but, but not body parts with each other. This results in a star-like star -like connectivity, which is a further sparsification. In addition to spatial edges, our model includes temporal edges that connect part detections of the same type in adjacent frames. To compute temporal edge strengths, we use logistic regression to predict the pairwise probability. It uses three complementary features. Deep matching feature, based on local image patch matching. Sieve descriptors that can be helpful when body parts exhibit rotations. And Euclidean distance between a pair of detections. A simple feature, yet useful for slow motions. Having detailed the construction of spatiotemporal graph, we're ready to describe the final stage of our uh, framework, the inference. Given the graph that contains body joint proposals as nodes and edges that connect these proposals within frame and across time, the goal is to find the decomposition of the graph where each connected component contains joints of the same person across multiple frames. We formulate this decomposition as a minimum cost multi-cut problem. We introduce two sets of binary variables, x, which indicates the presence or absence of a particular proposal and solution, and y, that indicates if two proposals belong to the same person. Both have associated costs. Unary costs come directly from the confidence of a detector and pairwise as estimated as discussed previously. We also introduce two sets of inequality constraints. The first one certifies consistent assignment of x's and y's. And the second one ensures that people tracks can consistently be defined by connected components. Minimum cost multicut is a notorious and p-hard problem. Unlike the prior work, though, we do not solve the LP exactly, but rely on an efficient Kerning and Lin type heuristic from the paper presented also here at CVPR, and you are encouraged to visit the poster. To evaluate our approach, we've conducted two sets of experiments. First, we evaluate our method in a single frame mode for a multi single frame multi-person pose estimation. We use the MPI multi-person pose data set and the standard mean average precision metric. Secondly, we evaluate our full spatial and temporal model on the task of the articulated tracking. As no suitable data set existed, we propose a new MPI video pose data set. It contains short video sequences with multiple people with fully annotated body poses for each frame. Here we evaluate using the standard clear mode metric for multi-object tracking. On the single frame pose estimation task, we compare bottom-up and top-down variants of our method. Both are based on the ResNet 100 and were trained under the same conditions. Top-down achieves, achieves higher mean AP which is especially pronounced on harder parts, such as ankles and wrists, which are usually harder to disambiguate. 
which proves that the, the joint grouping and part detection in the convnet is beneficial. Then we compare the runtime of the models, which consists of time spent in CNN pass and the inference time. Top-down model is very fast during inference because a substantial part of the part-to-person association is offloaded to the convnet. This comes at a cost of increased runtime of the CNN pass, which in our implementation processes each person in sequence. The run, this runtime can significantly be reduced by processing each person detection in parallel. We now compare our method to the state of the art, which uses exact ILP solver and fully connected graph structure. Propo uh, both proposed models achieve significant reduction in runtime due to sparser formulation and the use of heuristic solver. Finally, we compare the, the results to the, the results by the real-time multi-person pose estimation method of Kao et al., which also is presented here at CVPR, in fact, in the next uh, session. We also achieve comparable performance. We now present results on the articulated tracking task. We compare our spatial and temporal grouping approach against the two-stage baseline, track people first and estimate poses per frame. Spatial temporal grouping achieves 3% more improvement. It is, again, most pronounced on hard parts, such as ankles and wrists, emphasizing the benefit of jointly tracking people and estimating body poses. So to conclude, in our work, we propose a new approach for articulated tracking of multiple people in unconstrained scenes. The key building blocks of our approach are the spatial temporal grouping method by solving subgraph multicut problem the top-down model to associate parts to people. We also propose a new video post data set for evaluating post-tracking task. Uh, finally, we'd like to advertise the large-scale data set we are going to release in conjunction with, uh, uh, with post-track workshop at ICCV 17. We invite you to attend the workshop and participate in the challenge. Thank you.